Well, sh here we go again. Hey guys, Delta here, and welcome back to the home of super educational Dead by Daylight killer content here on YouTube. Almost a year ago, one of my viewers, Esper, started watching me on Twitch, and somewhere along the line, they decided it would be a really good idea if they were to watch all of my streams and VODs from that point onwards and record the results of every game that I played on stream, including the killer I played and the map that I played. And they've basically created what is a stat sheet that has over 2,800 games recorded of my live stream and how good I am at different killers and maps. One of the cool statistics that has come out of this sheet is my win rates on different maps. More specifically, this map, Dead Dog Saloon, the map that came out with the Death Slingers release. I have played 68 games of Dead Dog Saloon on Twitch. I have not lost a single one of them, 100% win rate. My win condition is slightly different to those you may have seen. Uh, some people do it based on how many pips they get for a game. So, you know, a plus pip is a win, uh, a black pip is a draw no pip is a loss. Some people do it based on kills, so if you get a 3k or 4k, that's a win. For me, I only care about stopping the survivors escaping via the exit gates. If the survivor was to escape via the exit gate, that would be considered a loss, and if the survivor was to not escape via the exit gate or to escape via the hatch, then that's considered a win, because I was able to prevent the survivors from completing all five generators and then escaping the trial through the exit gate. So I thought it'd be pretty cool to showcase a gameplay today of me playing Dead Dog Saloon with the Death Singer because it's his map and basically break down why I think this map is killer sided and why I have a 100% win rate on this map. Now the plan for today's video was to break down this map and showcase a hyper educational map orientated gameplay so that you can learn a lot more about Dead Dog Saloon and how to win it. But I actually just ended up going against a really sweaty Claudet team that had over like 10,000, 14 hours, 1,000 hours. They were really freaking good survivors and they wanted to make sure I knew that they were good. So instead, it's just me versus the sweaty Claudet team. And I thought you guys would enjoy it. Alright guys, let's get into the gameplay here. Dead Dog Saloon, the Grave of Galen Vale. And of course, the Death Singer, his home map here to showcase why this map is one of the strongest in the game. As you've seen, we've got some fun... It's not even making a loud noise. Oh, there we go. Now it's making a loud noise notification. Today I've learned that if a survivor does that at the start of the game, it doesn't make a loud noise notification. Isn't that great? Whoa. There's three of them up here. You know what? I reckon I can hear a survivor. Let's see what we do. There it is. There's one. Come down, my good pal. Yeah, they even got the blind from up there, but that's pretty incredible, isn't it? But we'll still get the uh, the hit here. Oh, the dead heart into nowhere! She doubled back on herself for half a second. She pretty much just committed to going straight there, which is not a great decision. She goes down here. There's no pallets to make now. But she knows that. So we just basic attack. And we know that um, there's a million survivors in this game with flashlights. So we do have to be a little bit concerned about the angles that we choose to pick up. But that was a pretty good angle. Now, what I want to do is lock down this area of the map here. So we've got a three gen that has uh, spawned this gen here, this gen here. And the one up on this gen here. So that's a really strong three gen right off the bat that we're going to look to try and uh, lock down versus these Claudettes. One of the things that makes this map so strong is the natural three gens that do spawn are really tight and hard to contest from the survivor team. Uh, but also you have uh, a bunch of uh, basically loops that you can break down and make um, a lot smaller, which is really good for the killer. Any loop that you can shut down and make smaller is, is huge. You can shoot through those cracks there, so she's not going to give me an angle, unfortunately. We're going to break open this wall. All these Claudettes, by the way, seem to be pretty, uh... <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you know what I mean, though? Like, a little bit, you know... Woo! Woo! You know what I mean? Like, that's it's one of those teams, which is pretty spicy. Don't mind if I do, every now and again. You can see the survivor going towards the main building. Oh, I didn't get around the corner. That's a shame. We need to come back and lock down the gens here, though. As you can see, they're working on... Oh, that's right over the head. I'm expecting uh, some decisive strikes from the Claudettes here. What we do is we basically come looking this direction. So if the survivor wants to sit on the gen, we can hit them. If they want to hop off the gen and basically uh, do their best to push me back, they can as well. You know, we have all the options in the world. We're going to go for a pickup here. I don't have my shot ready to go. 
I'm looking for scratch marks around this building area as well. I don't think there'll be anyone from this direction. We need to be a little bit careful about flashlights. We also need to kick this gem with pop or else we will actually lose our three gen that we've determined is, is the best to, to protect here. Sounds like the gen to my right has some good progress on it as well. So we'll just come up here. They blow it up, which is really nice. Once they bolt this, we're in a good position. Just come around the corner and give a basic attack. And then after the basic attack, we can go for our shot. Oh, wow. That was a really nice, uh, really nice angle. I'm going to, instead of chasing a survivor and losing a pop, come and kick the gen and turn towards the hook and see what's going on. One thing that a lot of survivors do um, is they drop the pallet on Deathslinger before he's shot. This survivor here knows that they need to play versus me like I'm a Huntress and go for the stun, which is amazing to see, actually. Their positioning is perfect, but they're hook looping right next to a hook. So basically, every second we spend here chasing is uh, spent with this survivor in trouble, which is great for me. I'm happy to take those, uh, those risks. Woo! Spicy dead hard. Very spicy dead hard. Yeah, these guys are giving me a, a, a run for my money. More so than a lot of survivors do. No flick, just hold W. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I need to be careful. These survivors have really good control over these gens. And I haven't hit this Claudette yet, either. There we go. There's the hit we needed. Remember, she had dead hard, so... Really weak loop here, so we'll just come around and knock her down. I don't think I need to be worried about flashlights from this side of the map, but I have just made the mistake of breaking a pallet and giving time for the survivors to rotate for the flashlights, which I really don't want to do in any uh, any scenario, if possible. This should be fine, though. Uh. If they are in position for flashlight saves, then they are true gaming gods at this point. Let's hook a little bit further back this time at this hook, and then we'll come and kick the, uh, the saloon gen again. It looks like they have full reset, which is uh, pretty challenging. We kind of wanted them to be injured. But we have just second hooked, I believe, the Claudette, right? So that's really good. If we can get her out of the game sooner rather than later, then we're in a good position. And then we'll come over here and contest this gen again here. This gen's really important, actually, for uh, winning this game as it works out. I don't know if the Claudette went up or not. But you should never drop a pallet like this. You don't gain any advantage from doing so. So, you know, not a, not a good decision. A million and one angles that we have available to us here, but she'll just dead hard off the, the shot. There it is. Easy dead hard. Good dodges, but we're not chasing that direction. We're going to come back and contest the unhook, which uh, these two survivors will be rotating for. And we want to make sure that we uh, can get in position to down this Claudette pretty quickly as well. Not even paying attention to our positioning. So we'll down her. We'll uh, wait out her decisive strike. Oh, that was uh, some weird angle. Some noises. Whoa, that was... What the fuck was that? I don't even know. Great. Uh, these dodges uh, have been pretty solid by most of the survivors here. Not an easy Claudette team. For sure. Take that. I expected a dead hard from them that never came. I don't know where this uh, final quarter is. But I assume she would be lurking. Could be wrong. There's one in the shack. Just here on the outside wall. Just pull it all the way. The edge. Make sure she's centered. There's a little point where the survivor flicks across the screen, which we're looking for there. We're going to come for uh, this Claudette as she's dead zoned. Oh, this pallet never got destroyed. Never mind. I thought I'd destroy the pallet. I was under the impression. We can definitely kill this Claudette here. Perfect. And if I want to win, I go for the slug and, and win right here, which is the best play. And you can see the scratch marks of the Claudette in the shack, so, you know, we know where they are. We want this shack pallet to be dropped. Perfect. We're going to come over here. And pick up Claudette in the loop. And we'll do a swing for the uh, the pallet drop if it comes. It doesn't come. So she's dead on hook. Now we just need to come back for this Claudette here. And the one that is sitting at the pallet. Is she in the... I'm confused because they picked her up. But I can still hear her as if she's right next to me. Not entirely sure what that's all about. 
Let's come around and see what's going on. That's one of them dead, though, which is super necessary. I need to break that. I forgot the pallet hadn't been dropped. Hadn't been uh, broken. Let's give this a kick, since it's our uh, gen that's the furthest from our three gen area. And this gen here and this gen here is just uh, a little easier to see at any given moment. We'll give this a kick as well. Reducing a lot of the options that these survivors have. Because they have object as well, they are giving me a lot of info at any time when they heal each other like this. I can hear a survivor healing here, I feel. No, I can't. It's the, uh, the vultures. Vultures doing vulture things. I wonder if the quarter is back here. I swear I heard one. Maybe not. That's fine. I must have just been hearing things. Uh, but they've they've basically removed themselves from the, the, the map to be able to, to self uh, heal each other. So that's that's fine for us. We'll come and check this gen over here as the uh, final survivor might be injured on it. They're not. Great. Oh, they're actually doing a full reset. All four, uh, three survivors were over here healing. So now we've got a lot of info as to where everyone is. That's great news. We also can come around the corner. This survivor loves to, to try and stealth their way out of situations, which just isn't going to happen here. Okie doke. Let's see what she does now. I don't remember if she has dead hard as well. Nope, no dead hard. Perfect. And also, we can pretty much avoid a flashlight stun through this wall here because they would have to be at a really crazy angle to get the uh, the blind from that, that angle. Instead of hooking in basement, which would seem like a really good idea, we're actually going to hook a little bit closer to our 3 gen and control it. Make sure that we can kick this gen immediately as both the survivors seem to be there. They get the blind instantly, which is fine. Just listen for drop downs mainly right now. I heard one on the right here, and there's the second one on the left. We're just going to come over and we'll get a, a tap on the, the Claudette. She has dead hard. There's a borrowed time for a stack, which is nice. I want you to throw this. You can shoot through that, but I guess I'm not uh, talented enough right now. Also, coming up here is good to kick the gen and then shoot her from above. There's some really cheeky angles you can get from above that a lot of survivors disrespect just throw off the loop timing it looks like dead hard in just a second let's get it out of the way there you go perfect and then we're going to look this direction because it seems like that would be the most li less likely direction for the Claudette to be and we'll go straight back to this back walk here and so you can see like this 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 area of the map is so hard for the survivors to play around and you just identify the three gen on this map which this one's I wouldn't even say this is the nastiest 3-gen I've had on this map. This is obviously a solid 3-gen, get me wrong. But we, we get usually nastier 3-gens on this map than this one here. And um, it's just so common. You don't have to play around the, the main building. You don't have to play around uh, half of the map in this, this game. You just lock down one area. And the survivors are forced to come to you pretty much every time on this map. And that's what makes this map so strong. Because you don't play around this main building here. This pseudo-infinite of a building. You just lock down an area and, and hook the survivor in that area. And then force the survivors to, to come to you like this Claudette is doing here. And this is like, well, how do you even get out of this area? With an attack, uh, we say the best for last. You just instantly ready your second shot. She's on the end of a hook. And the other Claudette with object, well, she hasn't rotated yet, so... <laughs> what are you meant to do? You know, there's not much they can do. She's slugged. We get high ground just to see from above where she might be. I think she's here still, right? On the main building? I don't think she's rotated yet. This guy's dead on hook. We're going to force second stage on this Claudette. Boom, second stage. And then we can come pick up this Claudette, put her on a hook, and, and kill her off as well. There's the rescue. So we, now we've had that rescue happen. We know we don't need to worry about the, um, the survivors and their... Their flashlights, the two Claudettes who are pretty cocky with their flashlights as well. We just continue locking down the area. And also the cool thing is, is now that we've got the this Claudette out of the game, I think, the hatch is about to spawn as well. So we can actually lock down the, the hatch now if we want to. It usually spawns in this back area here. So instead of going to the generators, because these guys are they're, they're resetting again, I'm actually going to find hatch real quick in this area of the map, hopefully. So we'll check here. Pretty common spawn, not here. We'll check on the road. We don't see it on the road just yet. What about over there? Nope. What about down there? Nope. What about down here? Nope. It won't be down there. Sometimes on this, but it's not this time. How about in this jungle gym here? Nope. Doesn't seem to be. We've got injured survivor in front of us, so we're going to go towards them. And, oh, there's the, uh, the DC for the hatch. Love that. Love that so much. Another fantastic game here from, you know, Dead Dog Saloon. What a, uh, an easy uh, game to map to, to lock down and, and force survivors literally to exploit their, their DCs to, uh, to, to get a, a hatch escape. 
to get hatches capable of things. You know, they can't even get gates open. That's, uh, says a lot about these survivors, really, doesn't it, at the end of the day. Guys, Dead Dog Saloon is the best killer map in the game that's an outdoor map, in my opinion. You know, all of the indoor maps are, are strong for killer, but this, I would say, is the strongest outdoor map for killer, and learning how to play it and lock it down will bring you so many killer wins. I hope this video helps a little bit with some of the strategies involved with winning on Dead Dog Saloon. If you enjoyed the gameplay, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you can get informed every time we do go live with an educational video. And come and check me out on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday live with educational killer commentary, playing every killer from Trapper to Pyramid Head. If you'd like to see that and request killers, then you know where to be. I've been Dalsy. Hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you on my next one. Oh, you can check out one of those ones over there.